Hey guys, Lord Naren White here, the Holy Ghost, the one true God. Back with you with the next video in my series, reading Dracula by Bram Stoker. Without further ado, returning to Dracula, as read by Lord Naren White. He stood up with my two hands in his, and as he looked down into my face, I am afraid I was blushing very much. He said, Little girl, I hold your hand, and you've kissed me, and if these things don't make us friends, nothing ever will. Thank you for your sweet honesty to me, and goodbye. He wrung my hand, and taking up his hat, went straight out of the room without looking back, without a tear, excuse me, without a tear, without a tear or a quiver, or a pause, and I am crying like a baby. Oh, why must a man like that be made unhappy, when there are lots of girls about who would worship the very ground he trod on? I know I would if I were free, only I don't want to be free. My dear, this quite upset me, and I feel I cannot write of happiness just this once. After telling you of it, and I don't wish to tell of the number three, until it can be all happy. Ever your loving, Lucy. P.S. Oh, about number three. I needn't tell you of number three, need I? Besides, it was all so confused. It seemed only a moment from his coming into the room till both his arms were round me and he was kissing me. I am very, very happy, and I don't know what I have done to deserve it. I must only try in the future to show that I am not ungrateful to God for all his goodness to me in sending to me such a lover, such a husband, and such a friend. Goodbye. Dr. Seward's Diary Kept in phonograph. 25 May. Ebb tide in appetite today. Cannot eat, cannot rest, so diary instead. Since my rebuff of yesterday, I have a sort of empty feeling. Nothing in the world seems of sufficient importance to be worth the doing as I knew that the only cure for this sort of thing was work. I went amongst the patients. I picked out one who has afforded me a study of much interest. He is so quaint that I am determined to understand him as well as I can. Today I seem to get nearer than ever before to the heart of his mystery. I questioned him more fully than I had ever done with a view to making myself master of the facts of his hallucination. In my manner of doing it there was, I now see something of cruelty. I seem to wish to keep him to the point of his madness, a thing which I avoid with the patience as I would the mouth of hell. Mem, under what circumstances would I not avoid the pit of hell? Omnia Rome Venelia Sunt, hell has its price. If there be anything behind this instinct, it will be valuable to trace afterwards accurately, trace it afterwards accurately. So I had better commence to do so, therefore. R. M. Renford, Renfield, age 59, sanguine temperament, Great physical strength, morbidly excitable, periods of gloom, ending in some fixed idea which I cannot make out. I presume that the sanguine temperament itself and the disturbing influence end in a mentally accomplished finish. A possibly dangerous man, probably dangerous if unselfish. In selfish caution is as secure an armor for their foes as for themselves. 
What I think of on this point is, when self is the fixed point, the centripetal force is balanced with the centrifugal. When duty, a cause, etc. is the fixed point, the latter force is paramount, and only accident or a series of accidents can balance it. Letter Quincy P. Morris to Honorable Arthur Holmwood 25 May My dear Art, We've told yarns by the campfire in the prairies and dressed one another's wounds after trying a landing at the Marquesas and drunk healths on the shore of Titicaca. There are more yarns to be told and other wounds to be healed and another health to be drunk. Won't you let this be at my campfire tomorrow night? I have no hesitation in asking you, as I know a certain lady is engaged to a certain dinner party, and that you are free. There will only be one other, our old pal at the Korea, Jack Seward. He's coming too, and we both want to mingle our weeps over the wine cup, and to drink a health with all our hearts to the happiest man in all the wide world, who has won the noblest heart that God has made and best worth winning. We promise you a hearty welcome and a loving greeting and a health as true as your own right hand. We shall both swear to leave you at home if you drink too deep to a certain pair of eyes. Come! Yours as ever and always, Quincy P. Morris. Telegram from Arthur Homewood to Quincy P. Morris, 26 May. Count me in every time. I bear messages which will make both your ears tingle. Art. Chapter 6. Mina Murray's Journal. 24 July, Whitby. Lucy met me at the station, looking sweeter and lovelier than ever, and we drove up to the house at the crescent in which they have rooms. This is a lovely place. The little river, the Esk, runs through a deep valley, which broadens out as it comes near the harbour. A great viaduct runs across with high piers, through which the view seems somehow further away than it really is. The valley is beautifully green, and it is so steep that when you are on the high land on either side, you look right across it, unless you are near enough to see down. The houses of the old town, the side away from us, are all red-roofed, and seem piled up, up, up one over the other anyhow. Like the pictures we see of Nuremberg. Right over the town is the ruin of Whitby Abbey, which was sacked by the Danes, and which is the scene of a part of Mermion, where the girl was built up in the wall. It is a most noble ruin, of immense size and full of beautiful and romantic bits. There is a legend that a white lady is seen in one of the windows. Between it and the town there is another church, at, excuse me, the parish one, round which is a big graveyard, all full of tombstones. This is to my mind the nicest spot in Whitby, for it lies right over the town and has a full view of the harbour, and all up the bay to where the headland called Kettleness stretches out into the sea. It descends so steeply over the harbour that part of the bank has fallen away, and some of the graves have been destroyed. We'll go ahead and stop there for this week. As usual, I want to say thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. 
please like, comment, and subscribe as it greatly helps the channel. Light be with you all. Take care and thanks again.